I would love for you to be able to stop the tape and write your own procedure once I explain to you what I want done here. Let's see how good you are. This will be very interesting and a beautiful test. If you can do this, ooh, we are really in good shape here. First, you need to create a table. Here I've created a multi-set table so I can have duplicate rows if necessary. I'm calling it SQL01 dot, which is my database, and I'm calling it INSPROC XYZ. Change the XYZ to your initials. It's got two columns in the table. That's the most important thing. Column 1, it's an integer. Column 2, it's an integer and I've given it a primary index of column 1. So all I want you to really do to begin is to create a table with two columns in it that are integers. Now, here's what I want you to do with your stored procedure. I want you to create a stored procedure. Here I'm calling it insert XYZ. Put your initials for the XYZ, but here's what I need you to do. Write this procedure and it's going to have to do some looping set some variables because I want you to insert into your table 1,000 rows. Now, in column 1, I would like to see 1,000 distinct values. No repeating. But in column 2, I only want to see 250 distinct values. So, when we look at the table at the end, I will say, hey, it has a thousand rows. And column one has a thousand distinct values. Column two has 250 distinct values. Good luck, and I will show you the answer on how I did it. If you were able to complete this assignment, congratulations. You are ready for prime time in stored procedures. Give yourself some time if you're new to stored procedures because they're a little tricky, but once you get them down, you're going to love them. Now, I've done mine a little differently, and let's point out some of these key things. You could have done it multiple ways, but take a look at what I've done. Now, I create the procedure. I call it INSPROC TLC, my initials, Thomas Lee Coffing, and you can see my begin. Of course, I have an end statement. Now, I'm declaring a variable called my number and I'm setting it to zero. But then I want you to notice that right away I say I'm going to set my number equal 1,000. You really didn't need to do this. I just happened to do it this way. Now, I go into the loop. I call the label my loop. And I'm going to have my loop and of course my end loop, my loop. So I'll know how to leave this. But here's where it gets really interesting. I only used one counter called my number. You probably used two, but this is a little technique that can shorten things. So of course, I set my number equal my number plus one, and then I check to see if it's greater than 2,000, because then I know I put my thousand rows in and I can leave the loop. But if not, it's time to get down to business and do the insert. Here you can see I insert into my table colon my number and then colon my number mod 250 which is going to divide my number by 250 and give me the remainder. And this is going to loop 1,000 times and at the end I'm going to have a thousand rows in here and a thousand distinct numbers in column 1 and 250 distinct numbers in column 2. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Need to learn SQL for Natiza Teradata or Aster? Visit coughingdw.com for our helpful training guides. With Teratom, SQL stands for So Quickly Learned. Hi, this is Tom Coffing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you're kept up to date on all our videos.